Alright, coming back, I'm going to actually leave, these are very similar to the ones that we did above, so I'm going to leave example 6 for you to try on your own, and we'll discuss it in class next time. Uh, mostly because it's really just kind of revisiting what happens when you have an oscillating plus a power function or an oscillating here. So those should be fairly simple for you, so go ahead and do those, and we'll discuss that in class next time. And what we want to look at today in our part two of our limits at infinity is looking at some very special functions uh, that we need to make sure that we do know their end behavior limits for. Uh, so I'm going to let you sit, just take a moment, I want you to pause the video. We're looking at the function e to the x, e to the negative x, the natural log of x, and I'm throw a nice little inverse tangent in, which if you recall we did the uh, picture for at the very beginning of this set of notes, so you might want to go back and review that. So take about two or three minutes, pause the video, and put down what you think these limits at infinity are going to be equal to. Okay, let's come back together and let's have you check your answers on these. Here are your answers for your e to the x and e to the negative x. And I mean, this is basically nothing more than knowing your parent graphs, your e to the x function exponential growth, Left behavior has a horizontal aspect of zero, right behavior goes to infinity. And your e to the negative x, if you take a look at that, that's your exponential decay, because it is a horizontal reflection of the graph over here, so you simply switch the sides. Okay. Let's take a look at our natural log. Again, basically having and making sure that you know your parent graph, your natural log graph looks like something along these lines, because it is the reflection of e to the x over the line y equals x, has a vertical asymptote right here, so you'll notice why I only asked for the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, because there is no from the left, it would not exist. Okay. Here is our nice friend, the inverse tangent, which we had graphed earlier in this set of notes, has horizontal asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, so this is my pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and the graph kind of follows along one period of the tangent graph flipped over the line y equals x. Okay, so you do need to make sure that you pretty much memorize these limits, they'll come up, and you just need to make sure that you have them kind of in your tool bag and you can just pull those out and you know what these limits are going to be. All right. So now let's come down and take a look at some examples. So for example, let's take a look at this one. Now in this, I'm having x go to infinity and now I have a composition with an e function, with an exponential function. What you're going to think about here is remember with composition, we need to first determine the limit as x goes to infinity of the inside function. And then whatever that is, that limit, whatever it's equal to, we'll put question mark, that that becomes the new limit as x approaches, we will fill that in there, of e to the x. So that's kind of our strategy. We're still using the same strategy we had before with the composition. Now, very nicely, this is a polynomial. Here's your dominant function. As x goes to infinity, and this is minus 8x squared, so the question is, where does minus 8x squared go? Well, x squared is going to go to infinity. Minus 8 times x squared is going to go to negative infinity. So this would equal negative infinity. So we add negative infinity up here, and now we take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the x, which is going to give us 0. What's the left end of e to the x? So the idea is you're still doing the same composition rule that you did before. Find the limit of the inside function. That becomes your new limiting value, and then you can do the limit for the outside function. All right, I'm going to let you try this one on your own. So pause the video. You determine where this is going, and then we will discuss. Okay, check your answer on that one. The limit as t approaches negative infinity, I'm using only the largest power, 
Both ends go up, so even on the left end, t to the fourth is going to go to infinity. That becomes my new limit, e to the t, e to the infinity is infinity. All right, now let's take a look at this bottom uh, example here. Now in this one, as we're looking at it, if I were to basically just direct substitution in, we would end up with e to the infinity, which is infinity, e to the infinity, but minus, so that would be minus infinity, and right there you already know we have a problem because it's an indeterminate form. So we need to do more work. Indeterminate. So when you think back to the strategies that we used for the polynomials before I taught you the shortcut. Before I taught you the shortcut, it was this idea that you could kind of factor out the dominating function or simply look at the dominating function. So the same thing is going to go here. What I want to do is I want to figure out the dominating function that dominates on the right side, that is the one that is going to be the largest, fastest to infinity on the right side. So if you take a look at your powers, think about which one would grow faster. In an exponential growth, which these three are, which one grows the fastest? The one with the largest power right here is going to be growing the fastest because it's going to have the largest base. Over here, these are exponential decays. I can really essentially ignore them in this problem because as x goes to infinity, both of these terms are going to go to zero. So I'm really only concerned with, in this situation, these three terms. And of these three terms, the dominant function is going to be this term right there. So the question is, where does that one go? That's e to the infinity, so this is going to be going to infinity. All right, let's take a look at the example down here. Now this one's a little different. This one up here in C, I was looking at the right end, and I was looking for the function that dominates on the right. Now what I'm going to be looking for, because this is x going to negative infinity, I'm looking at the left end, and I need the functions that win the race to infinity on the left end. So this one's a little bit different. It's the same function in here, but this term goes to zero, this term goes to zero, and this term goes to zero because the left end of exponential growth is always going to go to zero. So I, I can essentially ignore these, and I only have to look at these two, and then we talk to each other and we say, well, which one is going to win the race to infinity? Even though this is infinity minus infinity, the one that wins the race is going to be the one that has the larger power here. Because what that's going to do, because remember that e to the 15th, you can kind of think of that as a bigger base than e squared. The negative part is what's making the left end go to infinity. So this is now going to be the dominant function of this last two terms that are left. So the question then, I can essentially do this problem by simply looking at this term. And if I put negative infinity in here, times negative 15, this would be e to the infinity, which is infinity, times negative 9, which is going to give me negative infinity for my answer. So the trick is, in these, is you want to find the dominant function. Find the dominant function for that end. or figure out that my English needs to be worked on on this. Uh, find the dominant function for the end that you're looking at the limit for. That I'm basically looking here and realizing that's the left end, this is the right end. And then I want to find the function that wins the race to infinity from the ones that are there. I can ignore the ones that are going to zero. I look at the one that's winning the race to infinity. And once I have established that, I can then basically calculate the limit. Like what I did kind of as an intermediate step in here, if you want to put it in, so I really just did the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the 10x. And I also was still using the composition rule, which is what's the limit as x goes to infinity of 10x, which is infinity, and turn that into the limit as x goes to 
infinity of e to the x, and then that became my, oops, sorry, not e, became my infinity. So I, you know, at a certain point you start to do things in your head because you know you're doing the limit of a composition. So I do the limit of the inside function first, and then that became the new limit of the outside function. But at a certain point you can almost do a lot of this in your head. I really can just look at this and kind of think of this as direct substitution and say, well, 10 times infinity, that gives me infinity, e to the infinity is infinity, and then I don't have to actually write this all down. Likewise, over here, I don't have to come over to this part. I know that this is the piece that I'm going to be looking at. Same thing down here. Uh, just to kind of be thorough and show you all the steps in these first few examples, I turned this into basically calculating the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 9e to the negative 15x. The limit of a scalar times a function, I can pull that out the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the negative 15x. I then calculated, because it's a composition, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 15x. And when you do that, you're going to end up with infinity. The left end of a negative slope line goes up. I turn my limit into, bring in my scalar, the limit as x goes to, uh, this is going to replace down here, my color so we know, this comes up, fills in my location of my outside function, e to the x, which is going to give me negative 9 times infinity, which is negative infinity. So those are kind of all the steps that I'm kind of doing in my head as I take a look at this limit. Right, now, same kind of idea that we did with polynomials, these are very similar. You're going to look for the dominating function for the left or the right end, whichever one you're doing, and you're going to use that ratio and simplify. So like in this, I'm doing the limit as x goes to infinity. So what I know is I'm looking at the right end here, and the exponential growth is what dominates the right end. So in this top exponential, this dominates. In the bottom exponential, there's my dominating function. So this is going to become the limit as x approaches infinity of 6e to the 4x over 8e to the 4x. So this is very similar to what we did for polynomials. All right, then you're just going to simplify this. Very similar to what we did for the polynomials because I can't split this across right now. And when I simplify this, I get x goes to infinity the e to the 4x's are going to cancel, 6, 8 is the same as 3 fourths, and we end up with 3 fourths. If I'm doing the limit on the left end, which I'm doing here in B, left end, I now look for the functions that dominate on the left, and the functions that dominate on the left will be the decay functions with the highest uh, coefficient there. So in the top, the dominating function is going to be this. In the bottom, the dominating function is going to be this. So the idea is we can ignore all the rest of them because they're going to go to zero. They have negligible effect here. And I just need to look at those two. So I do the limit as x goes to negative infinity of my negative e to the negative 2x over my, that was a positive, wasn't it? 3e to the negative x. So I can just need to double check. Yeah, that was a plus. And then we need to simplify. Now this one's a little bit more complicated. It doesn't exactly cancel as nicely as the first example did. But when you have matching bases, you subtract your exponents. Negative 2x minus negative x is negative 2x plus x, which ends up in the top with an e to the negative x, and then the negative and divide by 3. You can think of this negative and divide by 3 as a scalar. We can pull that right out to the front, and we're doing the limit as x goes to negative infinity of e to the negative x, which is going to be what is the left end of an exponential decay? It's infinity. 
infinity times negative one-third is negative infinity. So I put that in there. So that's my final answer for that one. All right, why don't you guys try C, and then we'll check our answer. All right, check your answer for part C. The dominating function on the left end would be the decay function. So, and then be careful, they tried to trick you here. You're going for the one with the largest coefficient here that's negative, because you want the decay. I bring my dominant functions over. I simplify. The negatives cancel. The four-fifths is a constant. I pulled that to the front. Negative 6t minus negative 9t gave me 3t. Left is my exponent. The limit as x goes to negative infinity, the left end of exponential growth goes to 0. 0 times 4 fifths is 0, so I kind of skipped writing that step down. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a smattering of what happens when you have some exponential functions in there. All right, let's take a look at example 10. Again, this is the same thing. We're still practicing on those using the composition idea that we had. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to calculate the limit as x goes to infinity of the inside function, minus x squared plus 1. That's going to give me polynomial, look at your dominant function, this is a cubic, the right end of a cubic function goes up, so it's going to be infinity. So I turn my limit now into the limit as x approaches bring in this infinity here, which happens to be the same thing, but it's not because it was this, it's because your inside function limit is infinity, of your outside function, natural log of x. And what is the right end of the natural log of x? It goes to infinity. Okay, I'm going to leave this one for you to do on your own. So now that you kind of see how this is working, I'm going to let you go ahead and even with this inverse tangent one, I want you to do that one as well on your own. And that is the last of that set of notes. So that kind of wraps up, gives you a little bit of information on limits at infinity for some special functions, specifically our exponential, our logarithmic, and an inverse trig function the one that has the nice horizontal asymptotes in it. And we will stop there for this lecture, and we are done with all the material that leads up into the Chapter 2, including Section 4.4 tests that will be coming up.